Right, good evening and welcome to the Broken Bur Borough Council's Planning Committee meeting. And I've just have a few points before we start. We do have a PA system, as you'll notice, mobile phones should be switched off or on silent, and there is no fire drill planned tonight. The proceedings are filmed and will be available on the Woken Borough website. We will see from the camera's position that the committee members, council officers and registered speakers will normally be recorded. The speakers may ask not to be filmed, but their comments will be audio recorded. The planning committee is made up of nine elected members. I will ask them to introduce themselves one by one, and I'll start on my right with Angus. Councillor Angus Ross, representing working in the Zout. Wade Smith, member for Hurst. Michael Richards, member for Norwich and Working. I'm John Kaiser, I'm a member for Barton and I'm the uh, Deputy Chairman. Uh, Tim Holton from Walton in Mayor Early. Bill Sands from Barton in Woodley. John Jarvis from Twyford in Thank you very much. <laughs> we are supported and advised by a variety of professional council officers, and I'll ask those to introduce themselves starting on my part. Madeleine Shepherd, Clubs Committee. My name is Mary Fabry, I'm giving legal advice tonight. Uh, Cara Corrigan, Strategic Development Manager. Uh, Chris Easton, the Service Manager for Highway and Road Management. Thank you. The planning officers presenting tonight's application are sat to my far left and I will introduce those at the, at the appropriate time when they're presenting their application. Right, on to the procedure. This is a quasi-judicial committee with formal set procedures and conduct. Firstly, the planning officer will present each application. Then I will call in turn only those who are pre-registered to speak. Please come forward to the table. The microphone is controlled by the grey button on the base. The time limit of three minutes for each category of speaker will be strictly enforced. So please ensure that you get your key points across within your allotted time. Members of the committee are interested in the quality of what you have to say, not how long you speak for. And I emphasise that only those that are pre-registered to speak may, may speak. No others, including town or parish councils, agents, applicants, objectors or supporters, are permitted to address the committee, ask questions, or interrupt the meeting. Following the planning officer's presentation and the comments of registered speakers, the planning committee members will consider, question, and seek clarification for the application, and hopefully reach a decision, which may or may not agree with the planning officer's recommendations. Finally, a reminder that the local planning authority's role is to determine any valid planning application using local and national planning policy. Our role is not to suggest alterations to schemes, whether they are a good idea or needed, whether they are too costly or whether they are, there are alternative uses. Thank you very much. I shall move on to tonight's agenda and I'll ask Madeline for our apologies. Um, Councillor Shepard Bay and Councillor Holtzway. Next item is the minutes. Are there any amendments that need to be made to the minutes? Uh, show of hands then please that we're all happy with the minutes. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Does anyone need to declare an interest? No? Okay. Then on item 69, which is applications to be deferred or withdrawn, hopefully not because we only have two on the agenda. No <laughs> check. Okay. Right. On to the first application then which is agenda item 70 on page 11. It's the Swallowfield Road in Arthurfield. It's a full application for the construction of a 2.3 kilometre relief road. It's before the committee, but it's a major application and Wogan Fire Council is the applicant. Nick Chancellor is the case officer and I shall hand over to him. Thank you very much and good evening everyone. As Tim said, this is a full application for a 2.3 kilometre uh, relief road and it includes pedestrian cycle pathways along its full length. It will link the A327 Reading Road in the north with the A327 Eversley Road in the south, bypassing Arthur Cross. And the road bisects Swallowfield Road approximately in the middle 
I want to emphasize that this is a full application, not an outline application. So the alignment shown in the application plans are what would be built. So just to allow everyone to get their bearings, uh, this is the location of the proposed uh, road. Arborfield Cross is in the northeast of the plan. Bridge Farm is in the northwest. Arborfield Garrison is at the far southeast, just the corner, top corner of it there. And Swallowfield Road runs diagonally southwest to northeast, Henry Street Garden Centre being roughly in the middle of the plan. The site itself can be divided into roughly two halves, to the north between Reading Road and Swarthfield Road, and to the south between Swarthfield Road and Exley Road. The land to the north, it's mostly larger fields under intensive farming and has a relatively open character. To the south, in contrast, it's smaller fields, supporting both arable and pasture farming, interspersed with smaller blocks of woodland. So a little policy background to um, this application. The core strategy, obviously CP17, establishes the need to provide at least 13,000 <coughs> new dwellings and associated infrastructure up until the year 2026. The Arborfield Garrison SDL, SBD, and the Infrastructure Contributions SBD address the specific infrastructure requirements for the area in association with this new development. Arborfield Cross Relief Road is identified as being necessary to meet the needs of this expanded community. And that was confirmed through subsequent planning permissions granted at South Bend 4 SDL and Arborfield Garrison SDL, both of which were approved subject to planning obligations, which mean that financial contributions have been made by the developers towards the cost of this road. So in short, the relief road is anticipated by planning policy, and it's an essential component of the council's strategic plan for development delivery. consultation has been um, a bit of it in the past number of years. Initially in 2013, there was a route options appraisal um, which sought input from residents on four potential route options and this consultation resulted in a selection of option B, which is broadly speaking um, the route we're looking at this evening with some changes, but broadly speaking option B, the, the blue um, route shown there. Um, as I mentioned, it's been refined with technical work. A public exhibition was subsequently held earlier in 2016. And um, there's also been fairly extensive pre-application consultation with officers, myself and other officers at the council, um, before the planning application was submitted. And that's resulted in a number of changes and improvements to the scheme. So just before I get into describing a bit more about the development, just a few general points. Um, in my reports, those of you that have, um, um, may have noticed that in a number of places it, it refers to Arborfield Village, Arborfield Cross, or just Arborfield. Um, really, um, that should be taken to mean Arborfield Cross, of course. That's the crossroads in the middle of, um, that, that we all know um, on the A327. So just in the interest of clarity, that's what my report refers to. Um, also, the Planning Committee is no doubt aware that there is a planning application currently in, it's being um, assessed at, at the current time, not by me, but my co by a colleague uh, from Semex uh, on the Farley Estate for gravel extraction on 190 hectares of land. Um, part of this site is actually contiguous with the route of the Arborfield Cross Relief Road. But uh, it's not what we're here to discuss this evening. And um, in, in actual fact, that the road and the, um, the uh, gravel extraction are, are not mutually exclusive. They can both happen, um, essentially. Uh, the land in question uh, for the relief road is in private ownership. Um, and WBC is negotiating with landowners to, to acquire it. But in planning terms, um, just to say at the outset that the question of land ownership isn't, isn't relevant to the planning process, so it's not something I've taken into account in, in any shape or form uh, in assessing this application. So I'll start in terms of the, the detailed alignment itself at the north. This is the uh, 
uh, junction that's proposed with the A327 Reading Road, that's a roundabout. It's just adjacent to Bridge Farm, as you can see uh, there. It provides the opportunity this roundabout to build either a three-arm or a four-arm roundabout. Um, for the road itself, just a three-arm roundabout is necessary, just to provide that extra spur connecting to the arm four cross relief road. But if necessary, um, a fourth uh, access off this roundabout could be built, and it's been demonstrated that it could be built and safely built and, and in conformance with all the standards if necessary. And this could provide, if necessary, uh, an access to uh, the Farley estate if gravel extraction were to occur in the future. Moving further along the road, there's a central junction. This is the junction with um, Swallowfield Road, where it intersects with Swallowfield Road, I should say. Um, the proposal for the planning committee this evening is for a staggered junction. Um, a number of different options were looked at for, uh, for this junction, including crossroads and a roundabout, but they weren't um, considered to be appropriate. And that's the view of um, of, uh, of officers having, having um, examined the, um, the transport assessments in detail. Um, essentially, the reason for that is that a staggered junction um, will discourage uh, through traffic along Swallowfield Road to some extent. And the, the main part of the rationale for the relief road itself is to relieve traffic on Arbor Cross. And by discouraging traffic along Swallowfield Road, it helps to um, meets that objective. Also, at the Stagger Junction, there wouldn't be a requirement for lighting, and that's another benefit in terms of reducing the impact on the, the landscape and any possible impact on ecology, bats, etc. Cyclists using Swallowfield Road um, would have the option they could either traverse the junction in the same way that a vehicle would, by going onto the ACRR and then turning off again, or they could use a uh, alternative route, which is a bit longer, a pathway that um, essentially you can't see it on here, but it loops up a bit further to a bridge, goes across a bridge, and, and could make their way that way if they didn't feel they wanted to go on the relief road itself. A little further along the road, uh, that's what um, I refer to as a green bridge in my report. This is along the same alignment as the existing public price way, that's um, Harbourfield 17, that route. Uh, and it runs across a ridge, landscape ridge at present. The road itself would be built into a cutting that goes um, straight through the ridge. And so um, essentially the um, alignment of the public right of way um, by building a bridge would be kept the same and the carriageway of the road right angles would be um, underneath and there'd be 5.3 meters of clearance there. The green bridge itself um, is just that actually, it's, it's called a green bridge because it allows for a degree of planting on top of the bridge, um, some grass sides and some planting on top. And because of this cutting in the landscape, um, the green bridge part mitigates that because it mimics the line of the current bridge in the landscape. There's also an additional sort of side benefit as well to this bridge because not only will pedestrians, cyclists, and equestrian users be able to continue to use the right of way as they currently are, but it will also provide some permeability for ecology. So bats and badgers will be able to use this bridge to cross. There are badger tunnels, but uh, this is just a, another way in which um, another benefit to the bridge because uh, they would be able to commute um, using this route too. That's another view of the bridge um, head on uh, from the perspective of, of travelling on the road. And at the southernmost extent of the road is the roundabout of the A327 Eversley Road. Um, this would be a three-arm roundabout and you can see that the pedestrian cycle route connects into an existing um, pedestrian pathway uh, to, the, to the far south on the other side of the uh, Pedersen Road. 
So as I mentioned, that whole end of the road would benefit from a three meter wide shared um, pedestrian cycle pathway. The main carriageway itself would be 7.3 meters wide, and that would have a 50 mile an hour speed limit. And it would be finished with a low noise engineered surface. So that reduces, uh, it's a special surfacing on the road that reduces the, the tire noise uh, when vehicles are traveling at higher speeds, such as 50 miles an hour. <clears throat> the design of the road has been looked at in detail and it has also been subject to a stage one road safety audit. It's considered to be safe and appropriate. The speed limit is considered to be appropriate as well, given the, the nature of the route. Traffic modeling has also looked at the impact of drawing the, the traffic along this, this route and how that might affect nearby junctions. A number of different junctions have been looked at. There's a benefit for, for those in terms of relieving traffic. None more so, of course, than on Arlfield Cross, which is one of the main objectives here, is to relieve traffic uh, at, at that particular junction. I mentioned a couple of public rights of way. Across the, the whole length of the route, there are two public rights of way in which the alignment intersects. There's Arlfield 22 towards the northern half and Arlfield 17 in the southern half of the Green Bridge, which I've already mentioned. Both, align, uh, both rights of way would be maintained um, in, a, in, a, in a permanent sense after the road was constructed. Uh, there'd be no requirement to develop them to a different route permanently or stop them up or anything like that. Um, but it may be necessary during the course of construction for there, for there to be some temporary disruption, particularly our field 17. We're talking about building a, a, a cutting and constructing the bridge, so I think it's unrealistic to expect the um, right of way to remain open on that alignment um, at the time of construction. It may be possible, however, to do a diversion. Uh, certainly at Arbourfield 22 in the north, um, we would hope that it would be possible to do a diversion. Um, I can't provide any guarantees at this stage that that would be the case, but um, the applicant, that's WBC Highways, um, have assured me that they will look to maintain these routes as far as possible, and that would be the instruction to the contractor um, building the road. In any case, um, a TRO, transport uh, restriction order, which would be needed to, um, to do any of this, would, um, by natural course, look at diversions and what alternative routes might be possible. So we'd, we'd look to secure that um, and have the minimum disruption to the existing rights of way uh, as far as possible. In terms of landscaping, of course, this is a, a new 2.3 kilometre road. It's, um, it's inevitable that there's going to be some sort of landscape impact uh, and harm to the existing landscape. And during construction, that would be the case. There would be some temporary negative impacts as the road is built. Um, however, there is proposed to be quite a large amount of mitigation uh, in association with the road. And that's shown on this plan. I don't know if you can quite make it out, but there is um, plans to have uh, quite an extensive amount of new hedgerow planted um, that would um, replace um, actually far in excess of the hedgerow, that, the small amount of hedgerow that would be lost as a result of the road being constructed. Um, also, some existing hedgerow that's in poor condition um, can be thickened up. Um, new planting would, would improve the nature of that as, um, in terms of visually, um, but also in terms of habitat for wildlife. The highway verges would be planted with, um, with uh, species rich grass, so new trees, and there'll be some new woodland planting and buffer planting. There the areas um, pretty much shown in the dark blue on this plan you can see here. So overall, uh, landscaping, after a number of years, um, we are confident that um, it will mitigate the impact of the development. And there are a number of conditions, I should also add, that are recommended um, that would control the landscaping and the way in which the landscape is managed over a number of years. So in terms of um, noise, I should also um, stress that uh, this has been looked at in detail as part of the environmental statement, the company's application. A number of robust assessments have been carried out uh, to national standards. They've looked at the impact on neighboring properties. 
there will be um, an impact on, on some of the neighbouring properties. There, there is, our, um, for example, there's a residence at Armfield Court, and the road will lead to an increase in noise over what's there at the moment. But this falls below the threshold um, that would, so it is considered acceptable in terms of the increase in noise. Um, we are proposing as well, um, and this would be controlled by condition, that there would be um, noise barriers installed, uh, which will mitigate the impact of the noise um, to, to a certain extent. I mentioned as well the low, dro no, low noise um, surface on the road. At higher speeds, it's 50 miles an hour, that reduces the tire noise on the road. Um, ecology, I've already touched on this, but it's a, a full ecological impact assessment has been carried out, uh, and that's looked at all of the ecological features within the 250 metre radius of the alignments. During the construction period, there would be some moderate adverse impacts, these have been identified, but the application does propose habitat creation and other mitigations, such as the Green Bridge, the Badger Tunnels, which are off there, um, and badgers to commute underneath the road, so it will sever their foraging areas. The application does demonstrate that overall there will be a net gain for ecology through the creation of these new habitats and other similar measures. In drainage terms, the entire site falls within flood zone one. That's land that's the least likely. It's not at risk of flooding. It's, it's, um, it's, it's um, unlikely to happen naturally, uh, very unlikely. So the surface water drainage strategy, that, that looks at the drainage of, from the road itself. And it shows that uh, the road can be uh, constructed with appropriate drainage. So there'll be swales which will take the water away yeah. through natural features into um, proposed attenuation basins which are proposed at far north and far south of the route. There is a small section of EA culvert, Environment Agency culvert, at the far north of the road um, that will need to be reconstructed um, as part of the construction of the northern roundabout. Um, there's a, a further section of EA culvert which is um, in poor condition um, beyond the extent of the road the actual development here won't um, have any effect either way on that, but um, it is the proposal of um, the applicant by the American Council to improve a wider section of this culvert in association with the works so that they're done at the same time. So there is a benefit there too. In terms of the lighting, I mentioned the central junction that won't be lit. Um, it's possible that, uh, and, and likely in fact, that there will need to be lighting at either end of the road or the roundabouts. Um, and that's the assumption that uh, I've worked to. The lighting can be installed um, in an appropriate fashion and we control that by condition uh, to ensure that uh, the most sensitive sort of lighting is put in um, as possible. So um, that concludes description of this development. My recommendation to the committee is that the uh, development is approved subject to conditions which are outlined in my report. Thank you. Thank you very much for that detailed room. Paul, maybe you just switch off your speaker quick. Well, we have three people registered to speak, and the first one is Sam Goss, representing Woke <coughs> Borough Council. Welcome. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Sam Goss. I'm the Armour Field Cross Reef Growth Project Manager uh, working within the Major Highway Projects team. Uh, just a bit of background then. So, the application submitted is in the support of Core Strategy CP17 to support uh, the development of houses up to 2026. Uh, this is specifically uh, focused on CP18, uh, the Armour Field Garrison STL, uh, which included provision for relief road um, and improvements to the A327. Uh, and we are progressing the application in line with the preferred option B alignment which was refined and then approved by the executive in March 2015. Just a few points on the sort of development work that's happened uh, in, in the last 18 months. Um, the, the planning work has really been focused on trying to deliver a scheme which sits within the rural landscape. 
Um, we have got a rural unlit carriageway, uh, segregated footway cycleway, uh, sustainable drainage in the form of swale drainage, um, and an extensive landscaping scheme, as you've seen in the presentation. Uh, the most significant development um, in, in the period has really been around the um, public right of way AR17 bridge. Um, we entered into very early engagement uh, with stakeholders, um, the, the planners, uh, the local access forum, um, and committed to that bridge. It wasn't a given at the point in an option, uh, and we committed to providing that. This, this soon developed into a sort of multi-modal use bridge, um, having spoken to equestrian and cycle groups at the local access forum, because of their concerns about the use of Swallowfield Road and crossing the Arbourfield Cross Relief Road, so that was a big development to make sure that I didn't just cover the public rights of money, but provided that alternative leisure route, and that's been heavily supported, and we've been commended for that in the uh, exhibition, prior to the plan exhibition. Um, that went further still, where we adopted a green bridge suggestion from the landscape planner, um, with the added ecology benefits. We've got a lot of different ecological species in that area, we've got bats, uh, badgers, we've got potentially great crested newts, and a green corridor at the side of that bridge does provide uh, a good corridor to maintain that connectivity there. So, uh, the bridge overall has, has become quite a sort of a key feature of the scheme and provides significant benefit. Um, we've also had significant engagement in the period with Arborfield and Newland Parish Council regarding improvements to the village and traffic coming to sit alongside the Arborfield Cross Relief Road. Um, I've attended their neighbourhood plan sessions uh, to, to look at that and, and try and follow what they're doing. Uh, and we've sort of informally committed as the high authority to work with them to develop that alongside the relief road. And I've noted the suggested condition six um, in, in the report. And I think personally that, that is positive, whilst it adds an increase in scope to our scheme and, it, and it's beyond our current application. I think it's positive. Um, in summary, I think the ethos over the past 18 months has been proactive engagement with those stakeholders. We've had significant input from the PAC Consultants WSP, uh, the planners, the local access forum, the parish and, and adjacent landowners, and it's been really invaluable, really, in trying to develop the scheme. Um, I'm not just an officer. That's, it. That's, okay. it. That's great. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Right. And then the next speaker then is David Horton, a, a resident. Welcome. Thank you. Is this still on? No, you need to touch the grey button. <coughs> That's good. That's so. Hello. Good evening. My name is David Horton. I'm speaking on behalf of the members of our field court. Um, uh, there are, for those of you who don't know, there are nine families living in our field court. It's uh, built in 1906 and it was um, a listed, grade two listed building. It was converted in the 60s uh, into flats and houses. And we have several concerns. Um, which have been sent in as objections by four families, so I'm attempting to summarise those things. The first, well, the first one is noise, the second one is security, and the third one is our water supply. So firstly, noise. As one of the, uh, the houses that the road comes nearest to, we just want to ensure that the very best sound screening um, materials are used, um, uh, natural and artificial, um, and that the lowest noise, uh, road, road surface noise, is used, uh, sorry, the lowest noise, road surface is used. We do also uh, urge you to reduce the speed limit from 50 to 40 miles an hour as originally planned, and I believe as was in the original consultation when the, when the forums were, were originally notified. Um, not only for noise, but also um, for the, the Swallowfield Road Standard Junction. We feel that trying to cross that junction, turning left and then right, with vehicles doing more than 50 miles an hour would be dangerous. Secondly, security. Um, the road directly borders the gardens of Arborfield Court, so we, we want to make sure that where it does border it, the secure barriers are used. Um, firstly, to prevent people getting out of their cars and coming into our gardens, but also some of us have children, and children could run from the garden straight onto the road unless there's actually a, a secure barrier. The third point was the water. Um, I believe that I'm advised that under the Water Framework Directive and as implemented by the Environment Agency um, in the UK, both the quantity and the quality of our water supply are protected, should be protected. And um, we have had various discussions about this, but it hasn't really um, resulted in anything um, 
conclusive. We feel that the cutting is going to lower the groundwater table um, and possibly reduce uh, the flow of water into our well. Um, so we are urging you to um, make more uh, monitoring and, and data collection before you start construction and then after as well so that we can really see whether there is an effect. Um, secondly, if there is a loss of groundwater, um, we want an undertaking that you would either drill a groundwater well to provide us with water or connect us to the main supply. Um, and really we feel that those conditions ought to be attached as sort of addenda to the, to the plan and consent, um, should the plan consent go ahead. So that was it really, it was the noise, the security and the water supply. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Right, and the third and final speaker then, we have Councillor Gary Cowan. Welcome to you, Gary. Oh, thank you, happy new year, everybody. Uh, on page 24, there's a reference to no comment received from the local member. So I would like to assure, assure the committee and everybody present that uh, a lot of residents of PC and other board members and officers have been working towards the same um, for some considerable time. Um, the planning application is my full support and my thanks must go to the many officers and um, parties involved in delivering this to the planning committee for determination. Uh, conditions 6 and 8 refer to landscaping along with the environment and traffic management improvements, um, which are, are very welcome. Um, there is a reference to removal of six veteran trees, and I would ask that where possible trees should only be removed as a very last uh, resort. The Parish Council in its comments makes reference to a three metre bond to protect residents in Greenfield Lane and High Highfield Park. Along with the impact on residents there, there are other protected wildlife areas <coughs> along the route um, that would also benefit from such funding. I mean, a small amount of soil and other materials that will have to be removed to accommodate the, uh, uh, the, the relief role would enable the bonds to be delivered, which would, not be, which would be very much appreciated by the residents. Uh, I did notice from the, uh, the drawings that pound cops is not very clearly defined and if one looked at where pound cops sat and the relationship between that and bonding, um, there's a possibility that it would be a benefit. And what I would like to try and do is ask that by a, an additional condition be added that is prior to the commencement of development or the road being open to the public, the council will review the possible use of bonds to environmentally enhance the relief rock overall, but in particular in the vicinity of Greenfield Lane and Highfield Park. I've, I've kept the, the key, the word, the word in quite low key to enable the issue around the provision of, of bonds or not to be kept under constant review, and it doesn't force the council in any way down a route, route that may not want to go, but at least it would be interesting as, as a the scheme evolves, um, whether it, it could be achieved or not. And listening to the uh, resident from Albert Court, um, low noise surface is important, and again, bonding is, is possibly something that would deal with the problem he would have with respect to security. Uh, 40 miles per hour is an interesting point, but I think the police uh, were not uh, helpful in that, and that's what they may supply. I'm actually not sure where the main water supply is and could that possibly be used to supply our for port. Overall, as I said, I, I do support the scheme, but I would like to the, the plans to have flexibility in the conditions to enable some of these issues that are cropping up now um, to be looked at again and, and, uh, and for the plan to go ahead as, as is uh, recommended in, in the report. Thank you very much, Gary. You just turned these lights off, please. That'd be great. <coughs> well, before I open it up to members, I would like the officers to come back on the points that were raised by the speakers. So, the first one, if you must make some notes, is the noise that, is, that could possibly affect our field core. So, you'd like to come back on the, the sound sort of screening for that. 
and also the speed on the road and what the effect of noise would be if we do did reduce it to 40 miles an hour. And linked to that, which Councillor Cowan mentioned, was that the funding, the soil that's going to be removed, the gutting, could that be used for funding? So you could come on that point, please. Then on the security, um, so, so young children can't get onto the, the road. And then we had, again, Councillor Cowan brought it up as well, the water. Could you confirm that it is going to be strictly monitored? And what we propose to do, if it does prove to that there isn't the water that there once was. And the final point that I picked up was, can you just confirm that the trees that are being removed, it really is the last resort, and that we are planting the one The council is planting lots of other trees to replace them. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for those uh, comments as well. Um, firstly, to take the question of the noise fence, um, in the vicinity of Arthur Court. Um, the condition has been recommended to the committee um, as condition number nine that prior to commencement, further details of the acoustic barrier um, shall be submitted to the local planning authority for consideration. Um, so that will um, ensure that the details of the fence are appropriate, not only the functions as it's intended to function as a noise barrier, but also that it, um, within the landscape, uh, doesn't have um, a negative impact. So um, that, that is controlled by one of the recommended conditions. Um, in terms of the road surface, um, it's my understanding, and my colleague Chris will know be able to clarify this, but the, the low noise surface um, sort of comes into its own um, at the higher road speeds. So if you were to um, reduce the speed to 40 miles an hour, essentially the, the difference would be um, negligible um, with, with the low, low road noise surface at, at 40 miles an hour versus 50 miles an hour. Um, Chris may wish to, to clarify that. Is, that. is that the case, Chris? Uh, I was going to say that, that's fine. That's, that's correct. I mean, in terms of just picking up the speed of the wall on that point, um, Obviously, the report sets out, the study has had a look, condition was 40 miles an hour. Due to the design of the road and the way that that's progressed, obviously 50 miles an hour is deemed to be more appropriate following obviously assessments that uh, conversations have been had with the police. It's just features, many features need to be put in place and the design of the road changed to obviously aid in retaining vehicle speeds to 40 miles an hour. So 50 miles an hour also has the added benefit of detracting vehicles away from the village. So obviously, if you slow that route down, some encouragement to potentially send vehicles back to the village due to journey sums, etc. So, from the assessments that have been done, the, the correspondence of the terms of the police, we're happy and the road's been designed to a sufficient speed that can be in the years and obviously enforced. I'll just continue with the, the noise and on bunding and uh, the comments that Councillor Cowan had. And I, I can understand why, because this was in developing the application through the pre-app, and this was actually the applicant's initial approach, was to look at bunding, and some of the earlier versions of the proposals um, had, had shown bunding, uh, and in those locations as well, Greenswood Lane and um, near, near to Highfield Park. And when they went to look at the detailed noise modeling, bunding was actually shown to, to have virtually no effect on, on noise. Um, and Coupled with that, um, it, it, um, it was also considered by the landscape officer and also by myself to um, have some negative impacts in terms of the appearance of the road if there were to be bunds uh, to the side. But um, predominantly, the bunding um, has been looked at already in, in um, quite a, an amount of detail and um, it isn't in the application proposal because it has been shown to be ineffective. For, um, for reducing noise. Um, moving on to the question of security, um, um, Mr. Halton mentioned um, the possibility of children running onto the road. Um, it's my understanding that there's to be a fence running along the um, entire length of the road, so it wouldn't simply just be possible to run onto the road um, itself. Um, in the vicinity of Arbor Four Courts, of course, there would also be 
this acoustic barrier, this acoustic fence which we're proposing. Um, so hopefully that provides him with um, the assurance he needs that um, there would be a, a physical barrier to, to his property and his neighbour's properties. And lastly, on the question of water supply, um, there has been, as I understand, um, quite a bit of dialogue between working Borough Council and yourself and your neighbours looking at water supply, and it was looked at in the environmental statement. And um, the modelling shows um, that there's not projected to be any um, impact on the water supply of, of Arbourfield Court. Um, and I understand, but um, as a precaution, I understand that um, what the council has been doing, the applicant of the council has been doing, is monitoring the water levels in the vicinity of, of Arbourfield Court so that they can then be monitored um, subsequently um, to see if there is, in fact, any difference um, before and after. Um, though it is considered to be very unlikely that that were to be the case. And I also understand that the council, the applicant, has um, undertaken that if it can be demonstrated clearly that an effect has been had, then they would then be willing to enter into a dialogue with you about what, what might be done about that with a view to um, improving that situation. Noting though that um, it is considered to be unlikely, um, it wasn't considered um, appropriate to apply any conditions to the application uh, in terms of water supply. It's, it's, not, it's not something that the planning system really um, takes into account, but hopefully that does provide you with uh, the assurance uh, of shaking your head that, uh, that, that, that you need. I understand that um, also I should say that uh, I think um, the applicant does need uh, to, to actually work with you a bit more to try and establish the usage of water um, at your properties, and um, that will be necessary in order to, to be able to make the uh, assessment possible. And remove the trees. Oh, oh yes, and of course trees. Um, the, the design of the route has been um, made to minimise the impact on um, trees. There will be a number of trees that will have to be removed, but it's the the minimum that needs to be removed in order to make the road work. And one of the benefits of this staggered junction within the centre of the scheme over, um, say, a roundabout is that there's less land take and, and because of the, the nature of the design, fewer trees would need to be removed. Um, the count, uh, my colleagues um, have controlled tree protection and the landscaping scheme um, as, as recommended conditions. Of course, we would look to um, minimise um, the, the impact on um, better and mature trees, that's, that's always um, our objective with such conditions. Okay, thank you very much. I'll come to Councillor Kaiser first as he's, um, his ward is very, very close. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Chairman. Um, just, uh, I've got a number of questions. Are you saying, if we can just touch on the water supply, um, yours, uh, what, is what you're saying that there is a commitment to maintain that water supply? to Arbourfield Court. Is that what you're saying the council's making that commitment? Um, my understanding is that if it's if it can be shown that there is an impact, then the council has committed to right. um, okay. so do that, yes. Okay. Um, can I also ask about, uh, I welcome this. I mean, Arbourfield crosses a conservation area and we've seen around about 2,000 vehicles per hour. Pete, so I do welcome this road because it's obviously badly needed and as we're building up with 5,000 houses at the other end of the village, that's going to have a major impact going forward through to 2026. Um, the other question that, um, with regards to the A existing A327, will that road actually be get downgraded? Yes, it will no longer be the A327. The signage will be changed um, such that it, it's clear that the, the route through Arbourville Cross is no longer the A327. Now this is a, a full uh, this is a full application and if approved we obviously give you the green light to go ahead. As you go through the development of this road, things like buns may change, may move, you may change what you wish to do. How will that be notified to local residents and the parish council? Yeah. 
Um, Chris will take that if uh, that's possible. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the, the way the application works, we've got a planning application now, and then obviously the scheme moves on to detailed design. Um, in terms of those changes, it's not obvious that they will take place. We've seen a lot of design works happen, obviously, to get to this stage. Um, but if they are, then obviously they will get fed back through, obviously, the process to, to obviously, the, the residents and the like and the members. Um, but as I say, it's not the applications in front of us. It's not obvious that those elements will change. Um, but if they do, it's something that, obviously, will need to be picked up. Maybe it's a fundamental change, then, obviously, it may require an alteration to the applications in front of us. So highways will have a mechanism to notify any major changes? Any, yeah, any major change that is a substantial change, so, so, you know, substantially away from what's been the consent in, then clearly obviously planning will need to be consulted to see whether it's a uh, requirement of any alterations to the current planning application. That's in front of you today. Thank you. Right, uh, Bill. Yeah. Okay. Um, taking up Mr. Horton's point about noise, I notice on uh, page 15 uh, under 9, prior to commencement of the development, many barriers would be uh, considered. I'm likely to remember not too far away from this site where, on the Shinville Bypass, originally there were going to be sound barriers erected and they were, that, that uh, condition was withdrawn because of the use of uh, noise limiting road surface <coughs> and the barriers were never installed. Do we know what effect that's had on that, that area and would we use that to decide how we go forward with the mitigating the sound on this one? Yeah, we've we we got the monitoring of JET um, on that, but in terms of the understanding is um, that, that, that it works fine. There's a bit of a difference between the one on the eastern and this, this scheme. Um, so this scheme was originally uh, designed up uh, against national standards. Um, to, and looked at without barriers because obviously barriers are an extra cost and extra expense to do. So the, the intention was if we could do without barriers, we would. But it, because it fails um, certain national standards at certain points, we have to put the barriers in. So there is a difference. I think the difference in the, the Eastern Leaf as well, they originally hadn't um, intended to put the low tarmac, uh, low noise tarmac in, and then they put it in and it reduced the sound. And this one's all going in at the beginning. So low noise tarmac, um, but did you not say, Nick, that there is going to be a fence along the entire stretch and around Arborfield Court there's going to be an acoustic fence. So we're going to have low noise tar tarmac, fencing for security, and around low Arborfield Court we're also going to have an acoustic fence. That's, that's right. The fence that would run along the entire length of it wouldn't be an acoustic fence. No. That would just be a, a fence that would be installed as <coughs> ordinarily would be installed with any, any road of this nature. Angus, then Malcolm. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, three, three sort of points. First on trees, um, just picking up the point from the Arborfield Parish comments that six veteran trees uh, are scheduled for removal, uh, and the officer comment doesn't say yes or no. Uh, are some of the trees that are scheduled to be lost veteran trees? That's the first question. I, I believe so. I, can, I can't give you the exact number, but it, it's something of the order of six, yes. Okay. Um, and clearly, uh, you've looked to try and minimise that, that number. The second one is just on the road surface. I hear everything that's said about using a low noise surface, um, but unless I'm missing something, it's not covered in any condition uh, that it would be uh, put in. Um, should, should we not cover that? Perhaps you'd like to just check that whilst I ask the well, the third point is really not a question, it, it's um, I'm a mem member of the Local Access Forum, but I don't see it as a conflict because it's such a splendid scheme we've got for the Green Bridge uh, and taking on board the interests of the various users there in, in putting that in. And I do applaud the fact that, that um, we have taken that care and attention and added cost to supply that. Um, and I do note that uh, 
Planning officer said that were there to be any temporary diversions or closures, uh, that would be well discussed beforehand with, with the representative user groups. Um, to your um, initial question about low, uh, low noise surface, um, that is controlled actually in effect, although I'm not sure if it's, um, well in fact it is, yes, if you look at condition three, I'll, I'll just read the uh, word and the prior commencement of development, all these houses will be constructed in various different ways, including levels, widths, construction materials, depth of construction, surface water drainage, road signage and lighting should be submitted to LPA for approval. Uh, so that condition would control the um, surface materials of the road. Uh, so it's within officers' um, power to insist upon low, low at the right surfacing. Well, if you weren't, I was going to say something. Carry on. Yes, it, it's hidden in there. Uh, should it not be more explicit? We, we can we can make we can add a condition on to, to make it more explicit if you want. I mean, it is covered by that, but it's, if you feel more comfortable with us doing that, we can. Uh, it's not me being comfortable. I think a number of other people might be more comfortable. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, noted. And in terms of the um, potential diversions, um, if they were um, to be needed. Um, it's not my understanding that um, by default the local access forum would be consulted on alternative routes um, by, by natural course, um, but um, uh, possibly that's something that um, we could look at as a condition. Well, I think it is probably covered by, by the procedures that need to be followed for temporary closure I had it in Chinfield West. So uh, I think it is there. It's just noting that we do need to be conscious of it. Malcolm. Um, just confirming something about the light. There's lights at either end on the roundabout, the beginning and the end. There's nothing in the middle, including that junction, is it? the standard junction. No light there either. Um, so on a, on a winter evening when it's um, Dark and no lighting. Obviously, take that into account. I don't know what the traffic is like on Swallowfield Road normally. Is that a fairly heavily used road at the moment? Um, can you remind me what the point is of having it staggered rather than just to avoid having a roundabout in the bridge? Um, it, it's, I guess, as Nick said earlier, obviously, the report there is a flow of traffic that's identified on Swallowfield Road that makes obviously its way through the village. The intention is we the application the applicant obviously undertook some assessments and it's been identified that the stagger is the better um, option that's placed in front of us. The roundabout is more land intensive. It also encourages, well it doesn't encourage, but it provides an easier flow of movement from the north south, uh, from south north, across the So to obviously uh, and increase the flow of traffic into the village, whereas obviously the stagger has uh, an element to deter that from happening and keeps it onto the relief road uh, to bypass it as obviously expected. So even at night when you start, the, the flow of traffic is not going to be so great that it would justify a light, for instance? No, I mean, in terms of, I think there's a number of reasons for it, but in terms of just picking up on the highways element, there has been a stage one safety audit. It will follow through stage two with detailed design, and obviously stage three once open, and obviously four a year after. <coughs> so aspects like that can be considered. If deemed to be necessary, obviously can be included, but through the scheme that's been identified today, it's, it's not quite. I think, Malcolm, just to add, um, <coughs> obviously, putting the lighting in, it's quite a rural location, so you put loads of lighting in it, it's, it's quite it's an yeah, detrimental to the landscape and the people who are close to it, so it's better to keep it out if you can. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'd have a question myself on page 29.16. We're talking about reducing the, the forecast years from normal 15 to 7. Could you explain to me why we've done that? Okay, uh, yeah, in terms of. Um, yeah, there is some guidance, obviously, it's typically focused on noise and air assessments. In terms of, as the report picked up at the beginning, this road has been identified as mitigation associated with the core strategy for CP18, which is the development of the SDL in Arthur. And as such, the current local plan extends to 2026. Therefore, 
we've identified that the need for this road is up to 2026 to mitigate this development. Those developments are funding the delivery of this road, and as such, we're in the process now for the next local plan, which takes us up to 2036. Anything, obviously, post 2026 in the next local plan will give us the ability to address what's needed. And at this stage, we're not aware of what's going to be in that local plan, and as it would be very difficult to identify mitigation in this location up to 2036 or potentially beyond. Thank you. All right, members, before we go to those, anybody else want to ask questions, seek clarification? Am I able to do that? No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Now, listening to what members said, we only wanted to make one change to what we've got in the report, and that was condition three that we're going to add that we want the low noise tar. And I will put it that it needs to be cleared with the chairman and vice chair. If so, if we're all agreed on that, so it's clear. Right, the recommendation then is set out on page 12 for approval with the, the conditions. And then there's some informatives as well later on. There are no amendments in the members' update, so all those in favour, please show. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, can I ask um, the public if you're not staying for the next one, if you leave, please, thank you.